Alright, we're back again with the Hammer Podcast. Alright, today, friends, we're going to switch gears, and we're going to talk about systematic theology and hermeneutics. So, as we come out of the gates, Mike, could you give us a brief definition of those two terms? Well, sure. Uh, you know, I won't even, I'll give a working definition. Let's All right. put it that way. All right. Okay, you know, when we talk about systematic theology, as the name would suggest, right, we're talking about uh, certain systems of theology where people are, are, are taking topics and, and, you know, looking at Scripture and, and saying, okay, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's what we think is being taught, and it becomes kind of its own system. Uh, whereas with, with hermeneutics, uh, we're, we're talking about the science of interpreting Scripture. Right. How is it that we interpret Scripture? Each text that we come to, we're trying to interpret that text. Right. And it um, assumes that there's meaning in the text, right? The hermeneutics assumes there's meaning there and that we can find it. So what's the science of going and finding it? Exactly. Exactly. And it takes work, which is why Paul said to Timothy, right? Show yourself a workman that needs not be ashamed, right? But but that you're approved, you're, you're, you're rightly dividing the word of God. Okay. Uh, so it takes work. Right. It doesn't just, okay, I have the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit will guide us into truth. Right. Um, but we, we need to be pursuing it. Right. You don't just wake up one day and have all this knowledge in your head. You have to pursue it and right. work Right, the Holy it. Spirit's not going to just zap you right. with all of this... Uh, you know, knowledge. You get you, saved and then instantly... Right, right. You, 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 you know, you have to study. You have, you have to look into it. You have to put yourself in places where you're hearing it. Right. Uh, and reading it and so forth. So, yes. All right, good. So with those working definitions, what is the relationship between systematic theology, hermeneutics, and the Bible? Right, okay. So hermeneutics is interpreting Scripture. Uh, out of that interpretation, uh, you're going to get you know you're going to get systems of theology. You know, so they may take uh, something like uh, the, the doctrine of sin, and, and we're going to go from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we're going to look at at all the text of Scripture that that are dealing with sin, and from that we're going to kind of systematize it and and have this, uh, th this doctrine of sin. Uh, and, and you can just do that with a bunch of different topics, and, uh, and that kind of leads you to some, some different systems of, of theology. And of course, within those systems, you'll have some different views uh, on this or on that. Uh, and, and a lot of times those are things that are then added by man. Mm -hmm. They don't come directly from... The interpretation of Scripture, right? Um, so, but but hermeneutics is certainly related because you're you're taking you're supposed to be getting from the text uh, what the text is saying. All right? right, that's exegesis. Right, that's out of right, not eisegesis. Reading into into right, and, and the problem the problem I would suggest with any system of theology is that there is a degree of people reading uh, some of their own thoughts into it. Well, or you have a particular system uh, and you read a text and that text doesn't really fit your system. Mm -hmm. So instead of letting the exegesis tell you what that particular text is saying, you, you, you want to tweak it right. a little and make it say something that is really not saying. Well, because you want the system to be nice and neat with very clear boundaries. Right. And, and I don't care whether you're, uh, you know, you say, well, I'm, you know, a covenantalist. You know, I'm a dispensationalist or this or that. They, they, every, every system does this to some extent. Right. And, and that's why they can be helpful. Uh, but it's also, you know, the key is each text you're working on, what does that text say? Right. And then, and then I believe you should go from there. So 
Uh, but all of this is related and uh, and and important. And uh, and I think systematic theology, hermeneutics, uh, both of them are important, right, for us. And we have over two thousand years of church history, right, uh, where we have people engaging in uh, hermeneutics, engaging in uh, theology, and, and seeking to systematize it. And, right. And then so sometimes that, writing it down in creeds and um, confessions absolutely. and things like that. Absolutely. And of course, most of what we know is systematic theology. Most of it really wasn't systematized uh, until uh, 16th, 17th century. You know, so. Right. Now, okay, well, along the same lines, some people seem to put systematic theology, or maybe the creeds, or the confessions over the Bible or Scripture? Why do you think they would do that? Sure. Well, I, you know, some of this, I think, goes back to uh, how, how we tend to be trained, especially now I'm talking about those who would go to Bible college or go to seminary. You know, the, the best way, really, uh, to do seminary uh, or Bible college, to get a Bible degree, would be for somebody to just give you the Bible and uh, say, okay, you're going to learn for the first two years, you're going you're gonna to read the Bible cover to cover once a month for the first two years. So that's 24 times you'll get through Scripture. Yeah. And in addition to that, we'll start you, we'll, we'll start you into Greek and Hebrew. And if that doesn't kill you... <laughs> right. Yeah, right, uh, right. But, but you would have two years of nothing but Bible. Yeah. Okay? Immersed. You'd be immersed nothing in the Nothing but Bible, right? Then, then we'll begin to give you classes like, uh, uh, like theology, you know, uh, 201, theology 202, and so forth, right? Then, then we'll get into systematic theology. Because now you have consumed the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So now as you look at these systems, you've, you've got all this, all the Word of God. You Certainly you're not memorizing it even after two years of being in it. But you're looking at these systems and you're thinking about what you've read in the Word of God. And you can kind of look and say, eh, no, that really wouldn't be consistent with this verse or this text, right, or this book. Mm-hmm. It, we tend to do it the opposite way. Uh, out of necessity, because we can't take 20 years to get through seminary, although I think some people have anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so what happens is the systematic theology tends to get ahead of the actual Bible reading. Mm-hmm. And so then oftentimes uh, you're almost, you're not forced to, but you may feel forced to, but but you, you begin to take positions on things that really you have no business taking a position on because you haven't consumed enough scripture right yeah you haven't even read the passage that this system is saying interprets it this way right well i mean i know i know of some people that have been honest enough to say oh yeah you know i've i'm i've decided that i'm this or i'm that in terms of theology and they'll put a name to it right um and you'll say well what do you think about the minor prophets and 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 I've even had people be honest enough to say, well, I actually haven't read all of them. Are you, are you kidding me? Right. So you don't read all of Scripture, but you've read some theology books and you've already decided what you believe. And, and so what often happens is somebody will say, okay, uh, and I'll just take the famous because they're just so easy for us to use, right? Millennial views, you know. And uh, they'll just say, okay, well, one of these three must be right. You know, it, it, it's possible that Pre-millennial, amillennial, and post-millennial, it's possible that maybe there's something else besides those right. that might be more accurate or something, or a morphine of them, right? But we just say, okay, here are three. One of them must be right. The other two must be wrong. Now choose which one you are before you've really consumed Scripture. Right. And then what happens is we go in and we look at verses, and the verses that seem to support the systematic theology that hat that we put on, we're like, yeah, all right. And then the verses that seem to not support it, and in fact might even contradict it, we just ignore them, or we go to some commentary because we're we don't know how to explain it away, and we'll find somebody that did, and right. then we'll just adopt that, and we're happy, and everything's good. Well, that's a case of systematic theology uh, getting ahead of our Bible reading and, and actual true Bible knowledge. Right. 
And uh, that's why, you know, as you begin to, if you read Scripture, and certainly if you teach Scripture consistently, uh, as a pastor, verse by verse through Scripture, over years, you, you're going to begin to uh, change a little bit of your views. Um, certainly nothing on the gospel. Uh, so there's not going to be any major change like that. But, but you're going to begin to tweak and change your views a little bit because you're going to realize, hmm, this really doesn't fit that. You know, so it's easy for our, uh, for our theology uh, our systematic theology to get ahead of right. our Bible reading. It's also easy for us to uh, get, look, we're all human, and we love to look up to people. Right. Uh, and so it, we're, it may be our favorite Bible teacher. It may be that we just think that, I mean, we just got, a, you know, a tattoo, Sola Scriptura, you know, or one of the solas. We, we, man, we love the five solas, and we just say, man, we love John Calvin. Yeah, they got John oh, man, Calvin tattooed love, on their back. Yeah, we love yeah. Luther, and, and so we're all about, and so whatever they believed on anything, we just want to adopt that. Right. Um, so we, 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 have to be, we have to be careful of that, because what we want to do is, what, what does God's Word say? Right. You know, so, so all of this, you know, it, it's, I find it very enjoyable uh, to read systematic theology. Uh, I've had the privilege of teaching systematic theology uh, before, and, and it's, I, I find it enjoyable. But it should be secondary to our exegesis of whatever text we're, we happen to be working on at that particular point in time. Right. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's interesting how they sometimes the guruism, like you were saying, yeah, it, it's it gets all consuming. We love these people so much that we say, well, I'm just going to believe whatever they say, and then you love the Bible, but yet you'll displace what the Bible clearly says on other things because we we got to follow this one guy and what he taught and how he taught it. Yeah, yeah, and so you know we just and again I, I'm. It can be as guilty of this as anyone, so we need to uh, we, we we need to be careful, and uh, and I just think be mindful of our own you know pitfalls there that could occur. Right. It's easy to point out these things in other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, and it's I think it's a good thing that we love the teachers that have taught us. Right. That whether it's a dead person that we've read or sure, a sure. living person that we went to seminary with and they were our professors. We love and appreciate how they've taught us about the Bible, right? That's a good thing. Right, yeah. It, it becomes bad when we will displace what the text seems to clearly say to follow a man over what yeah, God that's says. that's right, that's right. But so, okay, let's go back to this whole larger structural discussion mm -hmm. of the relationship between systematic theology, the Bible, and hermeneutics. We had talked about confessions and the creeds. How do those play into this discussion? How do they relate to the Bible, and how should we relate them to the Bible? Yeah, well, that would be for a further discussion to open up all of that. But I'll just say this, that I'm not one that would suggest that creeds and confessions are bad. But again, uh, we want to stick to Scripture. Right? At least I want to stick to Scripture. Yeah, yeah right. That's right. Uh, and so it, it's interesting that some of the people that love Sola Scriptura violate that uh, quite often. Because they'll say Scripture alone, right? Scripture alone. But then they want to elevate. They speak of creeds often or confessions uh, almost as if it's on the same part of the Scripture. Now, if you were to ask them, they would say, oh, no, no, no. You know, Scripture's above but I have, uh, I have many, and usually, I, I hate to stereotype, but I will. Uh, usually it's, 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 it's younger guys that have read a couple of theology books and, you know, think they know more than anyone that's ever lived now in theology. <laughs> yeah. And so they'll come up and they'll say, well, you know, are you a confessional church? Or what do you do with creeds? You know, now, I would love for them to have walked up to the Apostle Paul and asked that question. Uh, yeah, that'd be a great, that'd be a fascinating question to ask yeah, to the apostle. So, you know, but, and then you tell them, no, no, we, we only preach scripture here. 
and they and they get upset and they say, well, you should, you know, no, you, you should use creeds, you should use confessions. Uh, and I just say, wow, okay, you just told me you're all about scripture. In fact, right on your right forearm here it says sola scriptura uh, tattoo, and you are now upset because I'm only using scripture and I only preach scripture. That's interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, but but there again. It is there's a disconnect in their thinking, you know, that uh, they're thinking about that. So that's just a brief, uh, you know, there are many other people have different views about creeds and confessions and, and, and where they fit and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's just like you were alluding to, but there's only one thing that's the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God. Exactly. And it's the Bible. The creeds are not inspired. Right. The systematic theology is written by men. Not inspired. N- not inspired. That's right. Right? There's only one thing that God decided to give us, which was right. his word, that he protected, right, as Peter says, he's superintended by the Holy and Spirit. Right. So that it was exactly as he wanted it. That's right. And it's easy for us to say amen to all of that and still have a blind spot and say, well, we need the Bible, plus we should have this. Right. And, and if we don't have those things, we can't understand the Bible, right? Like that you got to well, have Well, the... that's, and, and there are people that say that, that if you can't, if we don't have this, we can't understand the Bible, which is uh, ridiculous because Jesus did not say creeds and confessions will guide you into truth. Mm-hmm. He said the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're just going to, we're just going to stick to scripture. And, uh, and I think that's what, you know, that's what everyone should be doing.